up? I'm Rob Marinek from The Border. I'm here to go over some extra details with you on The Border Live scoring system. If you haven't seen the original video that shows you start to finish how to execute your event, you can check that out below. Today I'm going over some extras like using on-site TV monitors to show scoring progress, how to use the headshots feature to make your event look super pro, and uh, extra things like judging variance reports that we have to help you analyze your event to make it better for next time. Let's get into it. So for on-site TV monitors that show jams and start lists and live scoring updates, super simple. Um, as far as equipment, of course you need a TV. We just use an HDMI cable out on uh, whatever device. You can use a computer like I'm using in the demo here. You can use an iPad with an HDMI out. We just mount ours right here behind our TV mount on site at our events. Um, and the way you get there is you basically just go to your events list here, click on more, and uh, choose the TV monitor scoring button there. So I have a TV monitor set up here for our a sample jams event. I'm going to submit some scores on my phone here. Uh, you can do scores on phones, iPads, or manual entry in the computer if you want. Um, an iPhone 6 Plus is great for scoring. The, the slider bar works great and all that. So here I'm going to um, submit and finalize scores. You can see I get an instant update on uh, my monitor here. Zion Wright just jumped into first place. My next uh, jam, uh, current jam updates right here. And then I get, of course, my, all the jams in my event cycling through. So, on-site TV monitors, it's a real simple way to make your event look super pro. Now let's get right into uh, how headshots work. So, for headshots, you can see, you know, every skater in the database has a headshot. We, we want to keep the quality of these at a pretty decent level. So, right now we don't allow um, phone photos or iPad photos for headshots. You have to use, like, a at least a, point, a basic point-and-shoot camera or a basic SLR. So the way that's working is when people come to check in, you're updating all their information as you've seen on this skater update screen in the other video. You shoot a headshot of them and you get the image number from the camera. Say it's you know, DSC1854. You know, every uh, SLR camera gives an image name to the, uh, to the image. So I'm just going to enter 1854 right here under my profile where I'm just checking in and I'm going to hit update here. And what that does is you're repeating that process for everyone who checks in, shooting a headshot, recording their number, and uh, moving on to the next person to check in. When you're done with check-in, or if you have an extra staff person who can assist with this, they then go to this report in the system for the headshot log. Um, and that basically shows you all of the image numbers that go with each skater profile. So you can see I just shot photo number 1854 and it goes with Rob Marinick. I go over here to upload headshot, choose my file, and then, and then um, you know, I can uh, upload the headshot. A lot of people find that a little bit hectic to be executing that procedure in the middle of their event. Um, totally understandable, especially if you have an event with 100 skaters in it. We got it down to where we do it so fast and quick that we, we offer you the option of basically just shooting the headshots, recording the number, and you take your camera and dump it to a Dropbox or a Google Shared Drive and, and share the link with us. Basically, send it right to me. I will quickly take those photos, square them up, make them look nice, and upload them for you. Um, which we, you know, we, we will all look good there. We have, we have good headshots in the database. We want your, your event to look super pro if you're using live scoring monitors on site. All those headshots will appear in there. Your results will look super pro. And uh, yeah, so that's how headshots work. If you want to use it and you want to take advantage of our expertise, speed, and time to upload the headshots for you, definitely feel free to uh, dump your camera, share the drive with us, and uh, we'll get right on it. Um, so that's how headshots work. And now the last thing I want to show you is this thing we have called the judging variance report that helps you analyze your judging and improve your event for next time. So the judging variance report basically just allows you to analyze the scores for your event to help improve it for next time. You can find it under the admin menu under judging variance. Right here, we're looking at the Vans Pro Skate Park Series scores um, from Huntington that just went down for the qualifiers a couple of weeks ago. What this shows you is the scores that each skater got 
and the individual judges' scores and their variance. It's sorted by the, the widest variance. So what this is alerting you to is judges that might not be exactly on the same page for scoring a particular run. If, if, a, if a run goes down and one judge gives them a 70 and another judge gives them a 95, that, that's a huge variance and a, a probable indication of, of a judging issue. Um, so we made this report that sorts by that variance and our highest variance in the uh, Vance qualifiers that recently went down is uh, 36 points between the low score, which is Mike Sinclair here, and the high score, which is um, Ka uh, Jason Rothmeyer. That's a pretty wide variance. However, this particular skater, sorry, Abby, definitely blew it in the qualifiers here. He's in 78th place. Um, when the scores are down at the bottom of the scale, you're going to see huge variances. If Abby blows it, a 10 from Mike Sinclair is kind of the same thing as a 40 from Jason Rothmeyer. 10, 40, whatever, you're nowhere near the cut, you blew it. Where the variance becomes important is when you get to places that are higher up in the results. So all of your high variances should really be people that are super low that didn't do very well in the contest. So Santiago, you can see here, got an 88 with a 30 variance. Danny Tumia got a 59 with a 27 variance. Those are all completely normal and acceptable. Where you do want to kind of look is once you get into places that are a little higher, you don't want to, there shouldn't be that much of a variance. And you can see all of our high variances are the low scoring people in the contest. I don't want to toot our own horn, but that is a good sign of quality judging. You do not want to see high variances in your first, second, third, fourth, fifth places, or in basically any place that's making the cut to the next round. Um, because that just shows that your judges are kind of generally not on the same page and may be causing some wacky results. So that report is available for any event that you use to run uh, in the Border Live. We encourage you to use it. It helps you evaluate your entire judging staff. Um, and improve your uh, results and scoring for the next time. So that's it for some extra features of the Border Live. We're adding them all the time. We learn from events we do still to this day after all this time, and we're constantly updating the system. Hit me up with any questions. If you aren't a user of the Border Live yet, email me directly and we'll get you on it. I'm just rob at theborder.com. Thanks for watching it and thanks for using our software.